Welcome to the Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. Hi, this week we're going to continue our look into energy efficiency. I'll be speaking with Anthony Noland, he's an energy assessor who's going to help us explore the plethora of ratings and schemes out there throughout Australia and help us make sense of them and how they can benefit you. I'll also be speaking with Nicole Ewing, she's the building designer of a lightweight and uh, multi-residential project in Cairns. I'm here today yep. with <laughs> Anthony Noland. Yep. He's the director of Kennedy Associates Architecture. Thanks for being with us. That's okay, thanks, nice to be here. <laughs> so tell us Anthony, yep. how do you really make sense of all, of all these rating tools? Uh, it seems to be such a, a, a convoluted minefield of ratings, accreditations, yep. Yep. What does a home, uh, homeowner and a owner builder really need to know? Okay, um, it is complicated at, at one level. There's a plethora of different things out there and they're all competing at some level. But the easiest answer for that is they're generally competing in different ter territories. So they're either competing in the commercial sense or residential market. They're the two big distinctions. Um, so something like neighbours um, tend to be more focused in the commercial sector, Green Star commercial sector, um, that hers basics or residential sector. Um, the other big distinction between them is some of them are useful as a design tool, so they're predictive in their modelling, some of them are for an auditing tool for like an energy rating for an as built development. And that's where Green Star, for example, has a Green Star design tool and a Green Star as built tool. Something like Natters is only a design tool, basics only a design tool. So they have um, different territories in which they operate, they're doing different types of jobs, they're really different types of tools. Um, having said that, then, they're not um, compatible across the range. So a star rating in one isn't equal to a star rating in another, and probably never will be. Right, so I, yeah. I guess what is the solution to overcome this confusion, or is there, is there a particular uh, rating tool or, or scheme yeah. that is more important than perhaps another? Well, I think for, for most projects, it's pretty straightforward. If you're doing a residential project, you're generally looking at NATHERS and BASICS, okay. and, and that's really all you have to engage with. And on BASICS, is BASICS the same as, uh, as a star rating in, say, Queensland? No, that, that's going to be then quite a whole different kettle of fish, if you like. Um, the different states have different regulations. Only New South Wales has BASICS. Um, it's probably easier to talk about BASICS as a whole specific thing sure. um, than you know, just to answer that question you had then. Um, but to, um, for most projects, there's only really one requirement for that project you need to comply with. You don't need to worry about all the other ones that are for different types of projects. Okay, and how yeah. does a, ho um, a homeowner know which, which um, system they have to be complying with? Well, in the case of something like residential, it's very easy because it's mandated in regulation. So it's basics you need to comply with, basics is part of the DA process, um, and you know, there is no option other than to comply with basics. So you know, if you're lodging a DA on the checklist things, have you got your basic certificate? Yes, no, you can't lodge without one. Okay, and yep. in other states around Australia, yep. uh, there's a compulsory six star energy rating they need to have. Yeah. How, is that, how does that um, pair up to uh, a basic certificate? They're very different in a sense that in New South Wales, we have basics at the DA stage. So before you can get your consent, um, before you can lodge your application, even you've had to go and do, done the energy modelling to to meet certain targets. In all the other states, they do it at the construction stage. So through the Building Code of Australia, they bring in star ratings using the NatHERS type tools, and um, so that happens only at the construction stage. It's not looked at by councils, for example, and just the staging is very different. Then the second part about that is. Um, when they do the NatHERS ratings for basics, so NatHERS is used in basics as one of the options for compliance, they measure the outputs differently. So the, star, the tool produces stars, the tool also produces a vast array of other information, um, including energy use per square metre for heating and cooling as separate figures. Mm -hmm. Basics looks at the output differently. So um, other states look at star ratings, basics looks at the individual numbers for heating and cooling loads. It sounds more complicated than it is, um, but it does mean it's hard to compare New South Wales to any other state. That's hard, because mm -hmm. a six star house in every other state, yeah, you can't equate it to what the basics targets are. Right. Mm. And what came first, basics or, or six star? 
There was something before basics in New South Wales, which was the energy smart homes policy, and that was every council that signed up for it had their own little control. At the time that the um, Building Code of Australia was looking to bring in something nationally for energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. New South Wales already had this scheme in place. So there was um, all the other states adopted through the construction certificate stage, the Building Code of Australia with its star ratings. And at the same time, basics came out, or sort of concurrently, basics came out and took all the state, all the local council controls and put them into a state based control. Okay. They're both pretty much concurrent at that point. And then BASICS has continued to expand to other types of residential projects, so alterations and additions, multi-unit, and similarly the Building Code of Australia has expanded. So is BASICS a rating system? Yeah, um, essentially it is. I mean, there's, for the thermal comfort, um, which is different to the other states, but thermal comfort is really a pass-fail. Um, if you, you have to meet a certain target, you get for thermal comfort, you get through that comfort, you get to go and lodge your application. So it's, just, so it's just, a, just a threshold, it's not so much a rating system? Well, that's a threshold, and you can go obviously better than the threshold, mm -hmm. and that has a feed into other parts of the rating. Because the fundamental thing with BASICS compares, compares to the Building Code of Australia's star ratings, BASICS looks at water and energy use and thermal comfort. All the other star ratings just look at thermal comfort. Right. So BASICS is more comprehensive. There is a link in BASICS between the thermal comfort rating through the Nathurst type modelling and the energy use. So you can improve your energy score by improving your thermal comfort score. Um, that's quite unique and that basics looks at total energy use for a house is quite unique. And the other states were through the Building Cove Australia looking to expand their territory if you like to have a basics type scheme. Okay and if, and if a home is extraordinarily energy efficient or yep. has a very high uh, thermal rating, how, how is that acknowledged in the basic system? You get, um, the general thing with basics is it asks you to, um, the score it gives you is a score based on how much percentage improvement you have on an, on an average house. So um, the targets for most people are 40, 40, 40 energy use and 40 for water. So they're trying to make you go better than the average by quite an amount. You could elect to go higher and I've got projects where the clients select they want to go basic 60, 60. Hmm. There's unfortunately no incentive for that. If you go to council and you say, I've got a basic 60-60 project, they often just nod and say, thank you very much, but it doesn't help you. Is, so is there incentives um, in other parts of Australia? Um, they've been talked about. I don't think it's very concrete that there's other incentives, but you know, it's quite controversial about you know, can you get floor space bonuses or, or fast approval processes. That's probably the most likely. Um, you, know, you can get a faster approval in some cases if you've got a more energy efficient building. Um, but that's been one of the tricky things. I think because basics and the Building Code of Australia set a minimum threshold, that's become the default threshold for most people. And you know, in most of our projects, there's very few people who want to go higher than the compliance. I think it's human nature at some level. Mm -hmm. And speaking of yeah. compliance, yep. throughout Australia, excluding basics, six yep. star is, is, the, is the threshold. Generally, I think the confusing thing about nationally is and, and this goes back to a constitutional thing, which I think is a bit of an anomaly, mm -hmm. but the federal government doesn't have power to regulate housing. So each state government has power to regulate housing within their state. So we have every state's got its own individual thing. Mm -hmm. So um, generally they've gone six stars. Some states don't go six stars for energy, for the thermal comfort. Um, they then also have different rules about how they measure their six stars. So um, yeah, generally six stars is, is where things have headed. Um, but it's not universal. So Victoria, what's hot this week? Um, this week I was looking into uh, a couple of things out of London to do with water and art. Um, if you're heading to London before next March, the Barbican has this amazing uh, display on, interactive display with water in which you walk into a room and it's raining. So you feel like you're surrounded by rain, but every time you make a movement, the water stops. Also from London um, is Sarah Turner, who creates, it's a bit of a stretch here, but she creates um, artworks out of plastic bottles. And Coca-Cola actually commissioned her during the Olympics to create these amazing features um, from Coke bottles. Um, it doesn't look anything like Coke at all. It just looks like these incredible chandeliers. I don't know, the container of a bottle, the movement of water, lots of um, interesting perspectives there on, on different things you can do with water and art, and hopefully bring it into the home. Okay, well, I'm here today with Nicole Ewing, 
She's with Cairns-based architectural firm Studio Mango. Thanks for being with us, Nicole. My pleasure. Great. So we're here talking about a multi-unit residence in Kansas North. It's a medium density housing project that you, you've described as um, you've brought two units um, un together at the same time salvaging a Queenslander and renovating uh, a shed which has been transferred into a fourth dwelling. Can you give us a rundown about, about this project and, and how it came about? Well, the, um, the owners came to us and uh, didn't like the, what they'd seen in the market for residences, which uh, were unit dwellings at the time, and uh, came to us with this block of land and said, oh, what can you do? The initial idea was to knock down the Queenslander and put up another sort of unit block, and uh, we came to them with a few different options. Um, one, obviously, was saving the Queenslander and seeing how we could retrofit the, um, the garage at the back um, and came up with a... a a situation where we had four detached dwellings on the site. Uh, we we're lucky enough to have a long, um, narrow site, so we could actually stack the uh, dwellings one behind the other and retain the Queensland to bring it forward and keep that streetscape. Great. Now, what really makes this this project unique, and what were the main challenges for you as the architect? I suppose the main challenge was dealing with. Uh, a Queenslander, which was actually quite decrepit. Um, we had to remove a lot of the uh, existing tack-on bits that have happened over the years, um, and squeezing um, such a sort of a, um, having detached dwellings on such a, a tight site was probably another challenge that we came across. Um, I guess it's unique in the sense that it's sort of a paradigm for um, medium density housing where we're, where we're not actually sharing um, party walls. Um, we're also looking at uh, still trying to keep a bit of that uh, heritage that we have with the Cairns Queenslanders as well. And, and how did you achieve that, um, keeping, the, keeping the Queensland heritage? Um, I guess it was basically in the materiality. We, we looked at um, the construction type of the standard Queenslander and we didn't um, replicate, obviously, uh, to a T because we've got modern technology nowadays. So we looked at using lightweight construction with both steel and timber um, and looked at the spacings and proportions of the Queenslander and put that into a modern um, sense of uh, what it is to have, a, have a, a modern lightweight house, I guess. Right. And just on the lightweight materials, um, why did you choose um, lightweight materials and um, what were the benefits? I suppose lightweight in Cairns in a tropical environment is um, paramount if you don't want to have any thermal mass in your building to store that heat. Um, we don't have a, a big diurnal change here with our weather, so there's no point in storing any heat in the walls to keep the heat overnight because, uh, you know, you want to actually have all that, that temperature dissipating. Um, so that was, you know, basically comes to a crunch. It's the way you should design up here. All right, that's great. Nicole, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Many of our recent reader questions and viewer questions have focused around the best way to create the most sustainable home possible. Well, I've come across a great checklist from government website, Your Home. And basically it says, plan space efficiently, face living areas north if you can, design for safety and access, close off rooms that you heat and cool, and group wet areas together, find the best place for rainwater tanks, and find the best place for solar panels.